Hello everybody, it's Murray here and welcome back to my channel M Stuart Paintings. On today's acrylic painting tutorial we're going to paint this gorgeous pastel sunset seascape. I'm going to teach you how to mix really gorgeous pastel colours and how to blend them. I'm going to teach you how to use colours to create depths and distance in your work to make things look far away and close up. I'm going to teach you how to create an underpainting using lovely pastel colours and then how to use different types of brushes to easily paint waves with acrylic paint. So you can paint this gorgeous pastel realistic sunset seascape with me step by step. So let's get into it. So welcome everybody, these are the colours that I used for the tutorial, if you don't have any don't worry I can teach you how to make them. They are titanium white, naples yellow, cad yellow, cad orange, light pink, rose pink, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, iris purple, raw umber brown and indigo. Now I've got a little canvas here that I've used one third to measure up a sky and a little bit of cliff tops in the background to create perspective and two thirds is going to be the ocean and the water. We're going to have some sunlight coming from this side on the the left and we're going to have it reflected on the ocean and the beach and then we're going to have cooler tones on the right just to create realism and I'm going to teach you how to paint waves so if you'd like to copy down the um, outline feel free to do so and we'll get started so the first thing we're going to do is paint the sky and we're going to paint it in lovely pastel colors so we're going to get some white some titanium white and we're going to get naples yellow if you haven't got naples yellow you can just add a little bit of cad yellow and you basically want to get this nice buttery color sort of the color of butter it's just a very creamy yellow so lots and lots of white and a dot of yellow and we're just going to create a little um bit of a sunset here on the left hand side we want it very very pastel so all i'm doing i'm just coming down just above these cliff tops I'm going to leave a little gap, just a little gap just here on my canvas where we're going to have like sort of where the setting sun where we can use a bit of titanium white in a minute. But all we want to do, we just want to roughly gauge the colours and block in this area. So as the sun sets, it creates lovely warm colours as it goes under the horizon. But we want it really, really soft and pastel. So that's why we're using lots and lots of white with our yellow. So there we go. So as the sun sets, all the brightest colours are going to be around it and it's going to get slightly cooler as it goes under the horizon. So we're going to add a tiny bit of orange to our mix, still plenty of white more than anything to make it lovely and pastel. So just a hint of orange. Orange is very overpowering, so you don't need much. And we're going to create this lovely sort of peach tone. And we're just going to blend that into our Naples yellow and just sort of frame these lovely sort of mountain cliff tops. So if you imagine the sun's really, really hot and bright, and as it gets, the sky gets cooler either side of it, it just gets a little bit darker in color, and that's why we're adding some orange. So it's a bit of a jump to go from Naples yellow to this pastel peach color. So all we're gonna do, we're just gonna add a tiny bit of cad yellow to our bit of our mix. And just kind of create a sort of bridge tone, which kind of means like a tone that sort of merges the two areas. So just by adding a little bit of this yellow, look, we can just merge from light yellow, Naples yellow, into this sort of cad yellow, into the pastel peachy orange. So it's just a little trick. And it just looks really, really natural. All I'm doing, look, I'm really just gently blending. Don't worry so much if it's not super neat right at this stage. We just want to kind of gauge the colors and block everything in. So all I'm doing is creating little X shapes with my brush. And I'm just gently pushing the colors together just so the transitions are really, really smooth. There we go. So as we move towards the right, where I've got a big gap in um, my canvas, we're just going to add a tiny bit of light pink, which is just pink and white, if you haven't got that at home. So just pink, tiny bit of pink, and lots and lots and lots of white. So you could just use that pink. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more pink to it. Still got a hint of that white and orange. And all I'm gonna do is just make this 
bottom corner slightly darker but it's still really really pastel because it's got lots and lots of white in it so don't worry if you haven't got light pink at home it's a hard color to get you can just use normal pink and add lots and lots of white to get the same color so i appreciate not everyone has access to all the paints that i use or they're just expensive so don't worry now up here so look, we've got this lovely transition from light to sort of darker colors. So up here, we're gonna do the same, but we're just gonna frame our painting, make it slightly darker. We always wanna frame our corners because that gets the viewer to look towards the middle. So we're gonna get some of this light pink and we're gonna mix it with some Naples yellow. So if you haven't got the colors at home, you can just use lots and lots of white, a dot of pink and a dot of yellow, and you should get this nice pastel color. I'm going to swap to a bigger brush. I've just got a big chunky brush because it's easier to cover more distance. And we're just going to sort of blend this area. I think my brush might be a, a bit dirty because I haven't cleaned it. Oh no! <laughs> but never mind, we can paint over it. And we're going to create this colour. Now this colour, all it is is purple and lots and lots of white. Now I use a cool purple called Iris Purple. Again, if you haven't got that home, you can make it with some cobalt blue and some pink. So cobalt blue and some pink, lots and lots and lots of white, and you should get this sort of color. You only need a little bit of pink and a little bit of cobalt blue and lots and lots of white, and you'll get this sort of lavender color that I've just got here in a big splodge. And all it is, Again, just like the same principle, the sky gets cooler as it gets further away from the light source, which is the sun. So if you imagine the light is to the left, so this top corner here is not getting as much sun. So by just adding a little bit of this purple and white to our mix, we can frame our corners, which makes the viewer, as I say, look towards the middle. And it just looks more realistic. So just by adding some purple and white. So we just, if you just think of yin and yang, this side is more cool because it's getting less sunlight and the left hand side is more warm because it's getting more sunlight. So we'll have more warmer colors like yellows and oranges and peaches. So just like my palette, look, all the warm colors are on the left and all the sort of cooler colors are on the right. So I'm just mixing some of the orange and white to this purple and white and I'm just kind of create a bridge tone again just to make the areas fit together and I'm just creating my X shapes look with my big brush I'm just gently blending her so you hardly notice the change in color if you think nature is absolutely perfect you never notice the changes in color in the sky so a key to blending is looking at nature taking lots of photos and just trying to work on the smoothest of your blending. Um, if you ever watch here on YouTube, I'm just gonna add some yellow and white to create some Naples yellow, teeny tiny bit of orange. If you ever watch here on YouTube, Color by Felix, who I've worked with on his channel, he is fantastic at blending. He uses a blender brush. He's the master of blending. So go and check him out. He does fantastic paintings and he does fantastic blending. So I'm just gonna get some white. I'm just gonna put the sun in. I don't wanna make it too bright, so I'm just gonna gently blend it with my Naples yellow. I want it really, really subtle. So let's get some Naples yellow and just go around it. I want it really, really tiny. Just like a hint of sunlight peeping over from that side. So everything's a bit scruffy, so we're just going to neaten it up. Now we know where everything is, so let's get the same colours. So let's get some yellow and white. And just as it gets a little bit darker, just here, let's just start blending everything. If you've got any bits of white canvas shining through, just try to go over it. But take your time. So I'm going from yellow and white to yellow, orange and white to make the peach colour. So if you find that the video goes too fast, just pause it, 
go at your own speed, and if you find you're more advanced, you can always fast forward me. Just go at your own speed, it's your painting at home. Everyone goes different speeds. So all I'm doing, I'm putting a little bit of that orange just here. Just so it looks like the colour is changing, that this light is sort of shining through it. Let's get some of this light pink, which is just pink and white. And some orange. So they're all really, really pastel. So it's a hint darker. Look, it's just a hint darker because that orange is really overpowering. And let's just make this a little bit brighter and a bit smoother. Just so it looks more pretty. But she's starting to take shape really quickly. And you can always, look, if you make a boo-boo, you can always um, wipe, clean your brush. Like, I'm, I'm just wiping it on my top. <laughs> like a proper professional. But you can use, like, some kitchen towel. You can use a hair dryer. So all I'm doing, I'm trying to just make it a little bit straighter. So I'm just making it a little bit smoother. So there we go. Blending all this area together. Just trying to make all the transitions look barely noticeable. You see me getting up and just sort of sitting down. What I'm doing is I'm just going and taking a step back away from my painting. Because sometimes when you're really close to it, some bits can be a bit wonky. And you won't notice it because you're sitting almost on top of it. So by just taking a few steps back from your painting every so often... And just having a look at it from afar, you can see what you need to work on. So that looks straighter. That looks nicer, doesn't it? It looks more realistic. So I think I'm happy with that. So we've got this lovely transition. We've got the sunlight here on the sides. So now we're going to work on these mountains. And we're going to use really pastel colours to make them look really far um, back. So we're going to get this colour, which is called indigo, which is kind of like a bluey green. You can make this with... I've just got some green here to show you. You can make this with cobalt blue... A little bit of green and a tiny bit of brown. So that's how you kind of make indigo. So you can just buy it in a tube, which I've done because I'm lazy. So all I'm going to do, I'm just going to get some indigo and I'm going to add some white to it. And you get this sort of like bluey green colour. Look, it's like this nice sort of bluey green colour. And we're going to add a tiny dot of brown, just a tiny dot of raw umber brown. And that makes it more grey. So brown sucks the colour out of things and makes them more greyish. So you can add brown to any vibrant colour and it will make it more grey. So let's just add a little bit more cobalt blue. And cobalt blue is fantastic for making things look far back into the distance because it's nice and soft. So if we make it nice and grey here on the tip, this very tip of this cliff top looks like it's really far off into the distance. Can you see that? And it's just from using colour. Look, there's no detail. We're just using colours to trick the eye and make it look far, far away. And all we're going to do is we move towards the left. We're just going to add more cobalt blue and some little bit of brown to make it nice and grey. So it's the same combination. It's indigo, just a tiny bit of indigo, some white, cobalt blue to make it look far back and some brown to turn it grey. So we're just getting gradually darker as we move towards the left and we're just blending it into the previous colour. So as we move towards the left, which is getting darker, but we just always want to blend it into the previous lighter shade. Look, just so you don't notice again the transition. So the same technique. Let's add some more blue. Let's add some more brown. <laughs> Nothing hard. We're just getting darker and greyer. Bit like London, dark and grey. <laughs> so there we go. And what it's doing, if you if you imagine just underneath the sun, is going to be almost silhouetted. And as that cliff top look goes off into the distance, off into the ocean, it looks like it's further away. So I think I've got a hint of white here on my brush. Because I can never be bothered to clean them. I'm so lazy. 
because I paint every day. So if you're at home and you don't clean your brushes, don't worry, I'm the same. I am so lazy. I could buy a pack, you see, for £10. So I just use them till the wheels fall off and they die and I just buy another pack. So I don't really care. There we go. So let's just blend it all just so it looks nice and smooth. Let's do that corner. We just don't want any sort of jumps in colour. We just want to make her look nice and blended. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to get some brown and we're going to add that to our mix to create a really dark sort of grey. So there's some more blue, just a tiny bit. We just want a really, really dark, subtle grey. And all we're going to do with our sort of thinner brush, let's test her out. We're just going to put some grooves in the mountain. Now these are going to be barely noticeable from a distance. And um, what we're going to do, we're going to put them on first and then we're just going to smooth them out with our finger. Just so you, we don't want them really harsh. And all they are is just all the faraway shadows and crevices that caves and mountains and things create. So it's just texture. So all I'm going to do, look, I'm just going to smear it with my finger. So to again, push it back. They're barely noticeable, but all it is, is just texture in your mountains. And there we go. So it should look really really far away and that right corner should look like it's fading off into the ocean easy peasy now don't worry if it's not straight we can use some tape in a minute and we can fix all that we just want to block her in and we're going to start working on our ocean so our sunset is looking perfect our mountains are looking really really good so now we're going to work on the underpainting for our ocean and what we're going to try to do we're going to get a clean brush we're going to kind of try to match the light in the sky with the ocean so let's get some pink and white and a tiny bit of that purple and white and a little bit of orange and yellow we just basically want to make a sort of warm color like we did with the sky so we're going to make this sort of warm peachy color so orange yellow white you can add a dot of purple if you want So if you think the light is coming just above it, and we want to kind of match that in the water below. So all we're going to do, we've got this lovely um, cobalt blue outline that I've used, and the outline is all dry. So now we can just paint over it. And the really good thing is, is all our waves, look, show up underneath. So we've got this almost like tracing paper. We've got this lovely outline underneath because we've got this cobalt blue outline. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit purple just up the top. Just because you're going to get a bit of shade from those mountains at the top of the water. Just a hint. Still going to be nice and warm from the sun. I'm just going to create this underpainting. Now as we move from the left where it's nice and hot to the right it's going to get cooler but first we're just going to put a tiny bit of yellow just here because this is going to be the warmest area under that sun we could always warm it up in a minute but let's get cooler first so let's add more pink so some pink and white and let's make the middle section a little bit cooler so if you imagine orange is really warm pink is kind of like in between so think of like the three little bears, not too hot, not too cold, just right. This is sort of the just right, <laughs> if that makes sense. We're kind of like the middle tone with the sort of pinks where it's not too warm and it's not too cool. So by using pinks, look, we can merge the warm area on the left. And then when we do the cool area on the right, it's going to all merge together. And by using this colour, even on the sea foam, look, on the sea foam, it's going to all match. So all our lighting's going to match. It's so simple. It's such an easy technique, this tutorial. And you can use it all the time. So we're just going to add a tiny bit more of this pink. And then let's block up here in the middle. Get 
more paint on my brush. Now don't forget, if you haven't already liked and subscribed to the channel, please do so. Please like the videos because it really helps promote the videos. The more people who like and comment on the videos, it really, really helps the channel. The channel is doing really, really well and it's growing. Um, thank you so much for everyone who likes and shares the videos on Facebook. And don't forget to tag me on um, uh, Instagram and Facebook with your versions of the tutorials. So all I'm doing, I'm just adding a little bit of purple and white to the mix. Yep, don't forget to tag me with your versions. Um, I have amazing versions of the tutorials sent to me every week, which I like to shout out on my stories so you can see them on Instagram and Facebook. And it's really, really impressive because I get to meet artists from all around the world um, who will follow along with the tutorials. And some of their videos and paintings are absolutely fantastic. And sometimes even better than mine. So it's really, really good to see people and meet people and network and help support other artists by shouting them out. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit of cobalt blue. So let's just make it even cooler and a tiny bit of indigo, just a teeny tiny bit. So what we're doing, we're just making a cooler color. So all this side is getting less sunlight. So it's more cold. And we're doing our X shapes to blend. So can you now see, we've got the warm orange on the left, the pink in the middle, and this cooler sort of purpley blue, grayish color on the right. So um, we've got this lovely traced sort of waves to paint in over the top. So we've done our underpainting, which is really, really easy. So before we do our waves, let's just paint the sand. Now, for some reason, I couldn't seem to remember how to mix the first colour. <laughs> I just kind of went blank um, and just forgot. I think I was singing along too much to my music and I was just in the zone. But really, all you want to do, I added way too much pink um, here. All you want to do is make some orange, white and a tiny dot of pink and match the same color as the ocean. Look, I went way too dark. I don't know what I was doing. I think, as I say. And then my brush was a bit dirty and I just had to add more white. So I don't know why I was making it a lot darker. We don't want it dark. We want it almost identical to the ocean. So that's pretty close could do with a little bit more white but basically we just want the sand to reflect the same sort of color you can have it a tad darker because sand is a little bit darker than the sea so let's just add a little bit more white there we go no one would know see i could have edited that out you see but i didn't want to i want to show you that even me sometimes i'm just in my own head and i forget to do things so let's just warm her up by just adding some more orange and white. There we go. That sort of matches, doesn't it? And the good thing about showing you all this is that if you do make a mistake, it's not a problem. You can always just repaint it. Look, we can just go over it. You can even just dry it with a hairdryer and go over it and no one would notice. So don't ever fret if you make a boo-boo, as they say, or you make a mistake and you're just not happy with your work, you can always go back, look, I'm going back and I'm just, look, I'm smoothing bits over, I can see some white that I've missed. We'll get some tape in a minute and we'll fix all this. But part of being a good artist is just not taking it too seriously, not getting stressed, relax, have fun, turn me off if you want, put some music on, put the subtitles on. So let's get some warm gray. Now warm gray, I haven't put that on the list because I'm going to just show you how to make it. You can just add white and orange and a tiny dot of either black or brown. And all I'm going to do is just put some of this warm grey just at the bottom. So white, orange and a tiny bit of brown. And we could use a tiny dot of black. Be careful with black because it's very overpowering. But all we want is just a pastel grey. So that's why I was saying use brown. And 
And then all we're going to do, we're just going to mix the two areas together. So I'm just using a little bit of that pink to the grey. And again, just like in the middle, I'm just using those X shapes with my big brush. And I'm just merging the two, bridging the gap. There we go. And we should, if we use the same colour that we mixed for the mountains earlier, which was blue, a little bit of brown, tiny hint of indigo, and some white. Look, we can make just the corner a little bit darker and just blend it. So I'm just going to lift this up so it's easier to make my X shapes. We're just going to make this right hand corner a little bit darker just to frame her. Just so she looks prettier. That looks nicer, doesn't it? And we're going to do the same on the water, but we're going to do it very, very subtly. So I've got barely any pressure on my brush. Just sort of like a chalky residue. And I'm just look really gently, barely touching the canvas, just fluffing this right hand side just so it's nice and cool and a bit more grey. And again, that just frames the painting, just frames the composition. And it just makes these areas look like they're less in the sun. And they're getting less sunlight. That's all it is. So look at that. So from cool to warm. So let's dry our painting. Please dry your painting with a hairdryer. Let it air dry. And then let's get some painting tape. I have measured it. So I know it's exactly straight. And you can see how wonky my cliffs were. So we can fix that first. So let's just make sure that tape is nice and flat. And we've got a nice measured horizon. Because the worst thing is, is if you don't, you're going to have a wonky painting. And let's just get some of the ocean tone. And we're going to use a flat brush. And the reason we're using the flat brush is we can go right up to that tape, nice and flat, and just paint over these cliff tops that we've made a boo-boo. So as I say, don't worry, there's nothing you can't fix. You can clean anything up. So just match the tones if you can. Smooth it out with your finger if you have to. We just want to make sure that all those bits of mountains are covered up and our ocean is nice and flat and straight. So when you're happy with all the um, underpainting, what we're going to do, it's nice and dry, I'm going to get this brush, which is called a blender brush, and I'm just going to get a tiny bit of Naples yellow and white and a dot of pink. And all I'm going to do, it's like a makeup brush, it's got really, really soft bristles. What I'm going to do, just underneath the sun, I'm just going to smoothly blend some light yellowy white. Just really, really subtle, just to create sort of a shimmer on my ocean. It's just a little, little trick. And the great thing is, is the brush is so soft, it's just like a makeup brush. You can just barely touch the canvas and it's really easy just to smooth out areas and just blend some tones to again work on your transitions. So again these cost a dollar, a pound in the shop so they're worthy investment to get a few of them and just use them just for blending areas. So we're going to swap to our flat brush and we've got a nice clean flat brush and we're going to get some indigo and we're going to start painting the waves. So let's get a load of indigo and let's get, what should we add to indigo? Let's add a tiny bit of brown just to make it a little bit grayer, not as bright. And let's add a little bit of white, just a little bit. So indigo, white and a little bit of brown. And we should get this nice sort of harsh sort of turquoisey blue and we're going to start painting in our waves now the really good thing about a flat brush is hence the name it's flat so it's really easy to paint straight lines look you can just go across now our lines we kind of want a bit wiggly because waves go up and down and sort of crash so we're, all we're going to do is just start going along and making these harsher waves so just here, I'm going to have quite a big one because this is going to be like one that's coming in towards the shore. But as we move to the top where the tape is, we want the waves to be thinner 
and less harsh. So let's do this big one first. So this one's going to be quite harsh. But as we go up towards this tape, I'm just easing up the pressure and I'm using the very, very sharp ridge. Let's add a little bit more white to make the color less harsh. Could use a bit of cobalt blue again to push it back. So just making a lighter tone. Let's even add a tiny bit of pink and white. So ma making a softer tone, just like we did with the mountains. You remember we did with the corner of the mountains? We can make these waves in the background. Let's just go over this one just so it's not as harsh. Look, and it looks further back. See how that color tricks your eye? So let's make these ones look really, really thin. I'm just using that really sharp edge of my brush. Again, these brushes cost a pound or a dollar. So by having the right brushes will make your life so much easier. I've got a little link in the description box below, but you can get these ones from any art shop. They're just called a flat headed brush. And we're gonna go right up to the tape and create a nice smooth horizon. So look, go right up to the tape, use that brush. Don't be scared. And you should get a perfectly straight line. So because we're using this softer tone, it just makes them look further back. So let's just have some really subtle ones. So it's already starting to take shape. Now here on the right, we're just going to have a little few ways. We're not going to have anywhere near as many as we've got. So sorry, on the left. So on the, on the left hand side here, we're not going to have many waves. Let's just link these two areas together. And we're going to use this soft color because this color is more in the sunshine. So all the waves on the left, we're going to use this nice lighter shade of indigo. And we're not going to have so many harsh waves. So I'm just going to use my finger just to soften her, just so it's not as harsh. So let's get this lighter colour and let's just put... So look, just get the lighter shade and then we've got a darker shade. So the darker shade we're going to keep for the right and the lighter shade we're going to keep for the left. So this lighter shade, look, we're just going to have a few little dents, little caps of waves. You can just use the corner of this brush just to look, imply just little little lines. You can, if you find it easier, you could use a fan brush. Fan brushes are good for this as well. But I find it more if I've got a steady hand by using a flat brush, just easier for me. And because we've got those lovely outlines shining through, we can just go over them. The picture is actually based on a uh, beach that I went to in Crete, of all places, with my family on a holiday and I took this photo. Because a lot of people ask me where do I get my photos from and why do I paint sunsets? Well, I love the ocean and one of the major reasons I take pictures is because I spend most of my time at the ocean when I'm abroad. And I've got a thing for the sea, I don't know what it is, it's like I'm drawn to it, I love it. I love just sitting by the sea. And by taking pictures that I can remember special moments in my life, they're more important to me. So a lot of being an artist is painting what's important to you. So with me, I like sunsets and I like spending time with my family and I like watching the ocean. So that's why I concentrate on it. And that's why I'm good at it, because I enjoy it. So if you enjoy what you do, and you, you're much better, more likely to be good at it, because it's not a job, it's fun. And it's got meaning and purpose to you. So always when you're doing art, think of what you like, and what you're into, and then try to paint and draw that, and you'll be good at it. Easy trick. So all we're doing, look, we're just using the corner of this brush, just create sort of these indentations on the water to make it look 3D. 
can even put some on the wave. We're just trying to build her up really slowly and gently. So here on the wave, let's even use the corner to create sort of a shadow. So see how I'm using just the corner of the brush? That I'm just going, sort of going diagonally, just scraping it across the canvas. And that really sharp corner, I'm just pulling the paint down. And this nice pastel indigo color, this sort of turquoisey blue, is just creating the shade underneath the big wave. We get all that sea foam sort of bellowing into the shore. Let's have a bit just under here. It's starting to look more 3D and come alive. So we've got all the light colors now on the left. Let's just have a little bit on the sand, just to give the sand a little bit of texture because the sand is looking a bit boring. So again, same principle. I'm just using the sharp edge of the brush and the corner of the brush, and I'm just implying little divots. These can be little rocks and footprints in the sand. So take your time. Less is more, you don't want to go too gun home, just cover it. So if I zoom in for you, so it's a little bit easier, let's get a fine liner, same colour, and let's just create sort of swirls just here at the bottom. I'm just swirling my brush round and around, and let's just create some um, sort of froth on the sea foam, just some shadows. Look, I'm just sort of going, creating little circles with my brush. And all it's doing is just creating some shadow as that wave sort of crashes over. But can you see, because we've painted the underpainting first, all the light on the sea foam all matches with the sky. So that lovely sort of pink and that lovely sort of orange is shining down even on the sea foam. So it all looks realistic. Now let's get the darker tone. So let's get indigo. And our fine liner, so let's get some indigo and some brown. So plenty of indigo. Some cobalt blue just to make it darker and some brown to make it less um, bright. So indigo, a little bit raw umber and some blue. And we're just going to tiny bit of white just to make it not as harsh. So there we go. So now we've got the darker shade. What we're going to do is we're going to start building it up with our fine liner and start putting in the darks. So we've got all the light and all the subtle tone with that light indigo and white. And now we're going to put the harsher shadows on and start making her look more 3D. So if you imagine this sort of area of the wave has kind of got its back to the sun and it's kind of crashing down towards the beach. So all this is going to be in the shade and create a shadow. So that's why we're using harsh tones. And it's sort of coming down here and crashing into the shore. We don't want to use black because black makes it look much more cartoony. So this indigo is this lovely sort of dark turquoisey color. Now my reference photo, the wave was kind of weird. It kind of didn't just have a one solid color. It kind of broke up here on the right. On the right. So we'll attempt it. But if we need to fix it later, we can always fix it. So we're just going to create some shadow underneath here. So all these areas would be getting a little bit of shadow. And then just here, it's just going to be silhouetted. Sort of this solid bit of the wave as it rises up. So again, it's much easier to do fine detail with a smaller brush. 
So again, that's what I was saying about having a multi-pack and having all these different brushes that come with it. You get a little one of these, you get a flat brush, you get a fan brush. And just having look, a small brush, look, I can do really fine detail. I can create some little bits of the top here, the wave is crashing down. So if I zoom out, let's create some like divides here in between. Just create sort of like teeth in the in the foam, just shining down. Just a bit harsher shadows in areas. But as I say, it's the colours underneath now. Look, you see that it's starting to trick your eye. I hope these tutorials these are teaching you all the basics. As I say, as you get better at drawing and your work gets more realistic and you can just do it automatically from just experience, it will come. But if you nail the colors, your work, even very basically, will look so much more realistic. So let's swap back to our flat brush because then we can just cover more distance and do it quicker. Let's start putting in some of these harsher waves with this harsher tone. So these waves on the right are getting less sunlight and also they're closest to us. So they're going to be nice and harsh. They're going to be looking big and powerful. So by using a darker tone, we can bring them towards you. And if you're off on holiday this year, you can always combine photos. So a lot of people say, why don't you show sometimes your reference photo? Well, I'll put it on screen now for anyone who wants to see it. Um, I don't actually always copy them exact. What I tend to do with photos is I might take a sky from one or wave from another, but you can always take lots of photos and sometimes when you because the wave is moving you can't capture it always perfectly but the sky and the clouds in the background might be amazing so you can always mix and match i do that all the time i take a wave from one beach and a cloud from another beach but the good habit of taking lots of photos is you'll capture loads of things and you can work on the colors you see you see how the colors work. So as I say, the tutorial is not hard. It's just all about taking your time, using the right brushes for each technique. So as you can see, now I'm starting to build up these sort of waves with the darker tone. You can have odd caps of waves with this dark tone we're just getting harsher waves sometimes so again just using the corner of this flat brush just putting really pencil fine far away waves don't want too many here on the left want to keep it nice and light now to bring this area forward which is the edge, we want to use a harsh color because again, a harsh shadow will bring it forward. So by outlining it with my brush, look, I can bring the wave right on top of you onto the beach. So by using a harsh color here in the foreground, that's good. And again, using a bit of a harsher shadow, we can bring this crashing wave right towards us. So I'm just gonna blend it into the previous tone. So let's build this up. Let's start making this more 3D. Now here on the right, I'm gonna make quite dark because it's nearer to us than in the shade. So I'm just gonna make this a lot harsher. So again, look, I'm just texturizing areas, making it look more 3D. 
We'll put some sea foam and things in it at the, at, at the end. I just want to make this right hand corner look dark. So let's get more paint. Let's just finish this area first because this area is a bit bland. Just to tie it all together. So let's just mix some more paint. If your paint ever dries at home, you can use a mister bottle for plants. Uh, problem with acrylics, they dry really quick. It's actually, believe it or not, quite hot here in London. It's about 25, 30 degrees some days, so it's quite humid and hot. So if your paint's dry, you can always get a mist bottle that you spray plants with and just spray your palette once every five, 10 minutes, and that'll keep it dry. So I'm just making a slightly darker version of the color. So I've not added any white, just indigo, cobalt blue, and some brown. And again, I'm just using my brush just to make certain areas look really silhouetted and harsh to bring them towards the viewer. So it's very, very subtle. It's just using the really harsh tones here on the right and just here on the edges just to bring this really close to the viewer. So look, if I go quick and I go like my normal speed where I don't talk and I just work, I can paint this, honestly, I could paint this whole painting in like 20 minutes. So this is sort of speed I normally go at. <laughs> it's like you're on fast forward. But obviously I've got to slow it down for the tutorial. But that's what I'm saying to you. The more and more you do this, the more and more it will become automatic and you can do it so easily. So let's make some harsh ones coming towards the beach. So let's make this a bit harsher. This could be a big mama that's going to come in. So again, just like the transitions, look, if we make a harsh wave, we want to make sure it blends into the other waves. So There's not a big jump. So we can put these harsh colors on first. It's the same principle, just look, just making some of these waves. Nice and dark. This is a big powerful one that's building up. And some shadow as it crashes under. Now this bit here, this is the bit I don't like. In the photo, that's kind of how it was. But I think, as I said, sometimes when you're painting, sometimes what you capture in real life, and then when you paint, it just doesn't look right. And the great thing about a painting, unlike a photo, well, you can Photoshop things, I guess, but the great thing about a painting is you can move things, you can change things about. So we can always fix that part of the wave later. So we can always come back to it. So all I'm going to do, I'm just going to get some white and add it to the mix just to go back to the lighter shade, sort of an in-between shade. So it's just a little bit of indigo and blue. And I'm just trying to just make a sort of in-between and I'm just going to interlink these two areas. So where we've got the harshness of that really dark version, I'm just going to interlink the two areas using a sort of middle colour. Just so they're still harsh, they're just nowhere near as dark. And again, it just looks natural. So I keep saying to you, it's the same tricks over and over again. And then let's use that sort of in-between colour, this medium sort of darkness one, and just put some footsteps here in the, in the sand. So someone could have just come out of the water and it's left some nice footprints. So always just little added detail. And as I say, if you're going photorealistic, we're, we're painting this in just over an hour. If you really want it to be photorealistic, look how lovely that looks. You can, as I say, copy the photo exactly and take a day to paint this, but we're just doing the quick version today. So let's get some white and pink. And a little bit of orange to warm her up. So white, pink and orange. Let's create a peach tone. Let's get some Naples yellow. And 
Let's get some little bit of purple and white. It's a cooler back down, create more of a beige colour. We're gonna start painting some sea foam. Let's just make it a little bit lighter with some white. So I've swapped back to a fine liner. So I've got a nice thin brush. Tiny bit of pink. We just want to create a nice sort of pastel colour, like a pastel beige. And we're going to load up our fine liner. And we're just going to put some really subtle zigzags just to create the illusion of sea foam. And we just want to make a nice soft edge where you get that sort of edge of a wave. We get that sort of carpet look. Now here on the left, we're going to make it really almost unnoticeable. It's a bit like when we did the highlights on the mountains. We don't want to use just pure white because it will look cartoony. So look, all I'm doing, I'm just going around the edge of our wave. And then I'm just creating some zigzags. I'm trying to go around the dark, harsh shadows to again make it look 3D. And then we've got the warm colour sort of here. So why not use it just a tiny bit just to put some highlights just on some of the foam here. I don't want to cover up all our um, sea foam because that beautiful colour is what creates the realism, the underneath. We want it all matching. So let's add some more coolness as we move towards the middle. So we're adding more purple. And let's add a tiny bit of cerulean blue to the mix. So another colour. We're just going to add a little bit of cerulean blue. So if you can see, look, it's turning it more like a silvery grey. It's turning more like a little nice light grey colour. Because it's still got some orange in it, it's still got a hint of warmth. So it's just getting more beige, more grey. And as we come towards the middle, we're just going to do the same trick. So we're just going to look, we're just going to outline the edge to create that lovely sort of bubbly foam that you get on a wave. So let's just outline her. Let's mix it up onto our fine line. We can even use it a little bit here on the right, why not? Just a little bit. We just want it really subtle here on the right. We want it that you barely notice it. And sometimes with acrylics, because they're water-based, they absorb the colour that's underneath them. So it's going to be absorbing that orange underneath. So if your highlights don't... Let's just add a little bit more purple, just make it a little bit... I'm going to make a cooler version. If your highlights don't take so much, some cerulean blue you can always go over them a second time so i'm just getting some purple lots and lots and lots of white and some cerulean blue just to create a cooler blue and just as we move towards the right we're using cooler tones so that's why we've added blue now to the mix so we've gone from more of a warm gray into a cooler bluey purple you see so it's warm this side, we're going to get cooler as we move to the right. Same principle as the water and the sky. So now we've got these colours, it's really, really easy. Now we've mixed them up. Look, we can go a bit quicker now. and We can start doing some zigzags. So all I like to do, look, I, use, I like to use a fine liner and just create some zigzags and splats. And this is all the sort of outer rim here. We get this sort of nice little rim just here. We can create that nice thick bubbly rim that you get on ocean waves. And then we can go around it and try to create sort of ripples and splats and bubbles. So there we go. And as you can see, look, we just tie in these two areas together that you barely notice the change in colour. Trick in the eye. 
Let's just make this edge nice and firm. Look at that. So it's just, what I like to do is I like to have a few that interlink with that thick edge. And then look, I just create some zigzags and bubbles. Really subtle. Let's have a few over here just to tie this corner together. Just so it's not so bland. Try to make them random, don't have them all the same. So just let's just add some more blue to the mix and some purple. So just more blue just to make it look even cooler and darker. And then this corner, if you look, if you imagine this corner is getting hardly any sunlight so look if by making this bluer and darker again just looks more cool more realistic so look warm to cool yin and yang opposites think of that classic paula abdul song opposites attract <laughs> that was a great tune it's the same principle like a magnet plus and minus so you want these cool blues on this side. So let's put some foam here. And we can even look, we can even use that really bright blue. It's like electric blue, isn't it? To put some cool bits of the wave. So some of this area, look, is in the shade. So we can use that just to make it look more realistic. Look how beautiful that looks. See, see how the highlights stand out because you've got the the duality kind of the cross between the lights and the darks. It's so cool. Look at that. Look how pretty that is. Let's just have this a bit cooler because it's more in shade. So as I say, this area is still a bit scruffy. We can fix that at the end. We can paint over it. Let's keep doing our zigzags. As I say, like I'm going pretty detailed in this tutorial. I know, I know, I've been doing a lot of ones for beginners, and I'm trying to do tutorials for everyone because I know some people on the channel are really advanced, and some people on the channel are complete novices. So I'm trying to do videos for everyone. So if there's anything you want to learn, or anything you find hard, or you want me to do more videos on, just shout in the comments below. And as I say, I'll try to cater for everyone. I can't promise but we can always try but it's good for me because obviously you guys are watching at home you got, it's nice for me to know that I'm working towards things that will help you so I'm just going to mix some up, up more of the previous tone just going to add a tiny bit of orange just get some of that beige that we had previously and I'm just going to get most of the paint on my brush I think I had too much there and I'm just going to create some zigzags just here in the middle, just to finish this area. It's, it's a slightly, a little bit whiter, but don't worry. So as I say, look, sometimes with the highlights, look, if you go over them twice, they just look more vibrant. It's just because the second coat of paint isn't getting as much of the underpainting, so it stands out more. So look, by just making the shade lighter, just having a little bit more white and orange, just make this area a little bit more highlighted and then you can even just tiny bit put some shimmer just here on our sea foam 
not a crashing wave. Don't want to put much. I want to leave that lovely pastel orangey pink. But that foam is looking ridiculously realistic. That looks really cool. Let's put some zigzags in just subtly around those harsh shadows. So as I say, perfect life is sitting by the beach painting. Don't get much better than that. Go. So just finish this area just to tie it all together. So I think our sea foam is pretty much done. So let's just bridge these two areas together. So the dark area and the beige area. And let's just put some zigzags just here in the middle, just to link the area. So as I say, even the transitions, you just don't notice it. So the same principle over and over again. If there's harsh one side and there's subtle on the other side, link them together. So I've cleaned my brush and I'm just going to get some of the dark colour. I'm just going to make it again because mine's kind of dried up. So some indigo, cobalt blue and brown. So indigo, cobalt blue and brown. So it almost looks black, doesn't it? But it's not. It's this dark, dark indigo colour. Really, really dark. And I think I'm just going to, where we've gone over with the highlights, I've kind of mucked up my sharp outline. So let's just get my highlighter, highlighter, my fine liner, and just go round her and just make the shadow a little bit more prominent. Bring her closer towards you. And you can even make your bumps on the sand look a bit darker if you want to bring them nearer to you. So just remember, dark tones brings it closer to you, pastel tones pushes it back. And we can even, now we've got everything put in, look, we can put some shadows back with this harsher tone around our zigzags to make everything look more realistic. So as I say, I do not like this part of the wave. I will fix you, I will. <laughs> so let's just finish this bit off first before we do that. So neatening everything up. If you think with a painting, all the bit that makes it look super real is the last bit. So it's just having the discipline to stay with something until you get what you want. It's like that with anything, isn't it? If you're on a diet, you want to lose weight, there's no point giving up halfway. You may as well go the full hog till you get what you want. Or a business or anything. So it's have you got the mental discipline to keep going until it's all finished. Because sometimes just five minutes away from it being a masterpiece, if you just stuck with it. So let's just put some harsher shadows just under here. And then let's just put some harsher tones in between our sea foam. We can create look, a little ridge just here at the bottom where our nice fluffy sort of edge of our water is. And again, that just makes it look more 3D. So let's just go around it really, really subtly. Bring, bring that a little bit closer to the viewer. So just this bit here. As I say, it's so much easier with a tiny brush. Get fine detail, look. There we go. 
Now it looks like it's coming towards you. Let's just make a few dots that are a bit harsher. So look, you could just make these little bits around the seafoam just to make this edge look more real. As I say, if we're going photorealistic, we'd be here for about three days. <laughs> <laughs> How many little dots and bubbles and God knows what. So we'll do a few, but we won't go crazy. And then let's just do this bit down here. So I'm just putting some holes just to look in between, just so I get that nice outer ridge. So again, just going around the zigzags. Now let's try to fix this bit. I think this bit looks a bit bizarre. Because what it is, it's, it's like rising up and crashing down. But for some reason in the photo, there was sort of like white bits shining through, which is not very pretty in a painting. So let's just darken her up, see what it looks like. this a little bit harsher for some zigzags does look pretty realistic though I think for a quick tutorial just have some harsher ones just here Just some little divides in the wave. Just here. Let's make those footsteps a little bit bigger. So what I'm gonna attempt to do you don't have to copy this at home, okay? You can just watch along. But as I say, I want to leave everything in the videos because I want to show you how you can change things if you want to. I'm just mixing a lighter version. Do you remember we did the lighter version, which was indigo, blue, uh, brown, and some white? And I just wanted to show you, look, you can, you can poke holes, look, in things. So if anyone's watched any of the tutorials we've done on things like clouds, and we've done things like leaves and trees that you can poke things like background sky or background water in our case now and poke it back through so what you can do is dry your painting so in the photo it's kind of like this it was kind of like a gap in between and then it was sort of crashing down But I don't kind of like that. I don't think it looks nice. Even though it's true to life. I think it just doesn't work as a painting. As I say, sometimes your painting and your photos don't match. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to dry it with a hairdryer. So I've dried my painting. And I've mixed up some of the pink that we use for the undercolour. And because this is totally dry, unlike oil paints, look, you can just... Dry go over the top so by using some of that pink look I can just put back in some ocean and we can change the shape of this wave so if you're painting along at home and as I say if you're not happy with a certain area of the painting don't worry dry your work with a hairdryer mix some of the original color that we used earlier so this was pink white lots of white and a hint of orange and we can put back and look we can even change the shapes of things so we can make areas less harsh and then let's go back to our really dark indigo 
which was indigo, blue, cobalt blue and raw umber. And our flat brush, so let's get that really harsh wave colour. And now and then let's block back in. Now we've got the ocean. Nice. Let's make this wave just look a bit thicker. There we go. I think just because the paint's still a little bit wet, it's just not as dark as it should be. So let's just get some more paint. So as I say, look, sometimes paint don't take, sometimes you have to dry it. I know it's a hassle. I know most people probably fast forward this, but this is real life. This is what I keep trying to say to you with the videos. Not everything is first time perfect. I'm so great, I'm the master. A lot of things are more realistic, like the real world. It takes a lot of practice, a lot of discipline, a lot of hard work. So knowing that and me showing you that, I want to keep it real and show you not everything is a problem. Like as I say, look, we can fix anything, but sometimes it just isn't always perfect first time. So don't be afraid, look, if you have to change things up. So that looks nicer. That looks better. So by just look finishing this area here, putting back in these waves that we've just kind of painted over. As I say, I could have edited all this out, you wouldn't have noticed, but I think it's important for people at home to watch these things. So just, let's just darken this area over. Because the worst thing is, it's like, having a hit song and you can't stand it if, if you've got something wrong with your painting and then you sell it or it's in a gallery or you've given it to someone and you see it all the time you'll cringe because you'll be like oh if I just spent five minutes fixing that area so it's best to just do it now it won't drive you crazy <laughs> in the future so I'm just using some of the light shade just to make it look a bit more like splash a spray here and I'm just gonna get the dark shade and a fine liner and just draw some little gaps little teeth here just like we have on the other side just to make her finished and then what I think we should do is put her on a nice little easel so we can show her off to you guys at home and I think she's finished so I've signed her in the bottom left hand corner so you've got this beautiful sunset here on the left hand side we've got the sun and we've learned how to blend and how to push it back we've got our darkened corners so you focus down the middle you've learned how to push back your cliff tops by using a pastel blue and how to have it fade off into the distance using color we've got the lighter waves in the far off and we've got the darker waves and you've painted an underpainting so all our light matches where we've got the cool tones this side and the warm tones on the left hand side and you've learned how to paint waves and how to paint sea foam to create super realistic waves in just over an hour and 14 minutes wow so don't forget to like and subscribe we've got plenty over 150 painting tutorials here on the channel don't forget to tag me at m Stuart paintings on instagram and facebook with your version so i can show them off and happy paintings everyone take care have a great time see you soon bye